it using its, uh, uh, we can represent it using its Fourier transform. So we get that this is equal to sum f of n uh, integral from minus infinity uh, from minus pi right to pi of uh, f l hat of omega e to the uh, what is it so e to the i omega t but t will be replaced by t minus m so t minus m um, t omega so all that we are doing we are just replacing things by their definitions and now what we can do so the only extra the only trick that we are doing here we keep switching between integration and summation using uh, linearity of the operator and similar things, right? So now this you can write it as sum m goes from minus infinity to infinity. Ah, uh, sorry. I, I said I am going to switch integration and summation. So it will be and I am missing here 1 over 2 pi. Uh, so I'll have that this is equal 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi. And then uh, here I'll have sum n equals from minus infinity to infinity uh, f of n. Um, times uh, e to the uh, i omega t minus n, right, uh, times the whole thing times uh, L hat of omega t omega. But what is this? This is just the, uh, the this is just f of t minus uh, let me see I'm doing something ah okay so let's split this uh, into two okay so uh, this is now equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi and then I'll have sum n equals from minus infinity to infinity f of n and I'm going to keep this e to the minus i n omega and then here I'll have L hat of omega and then e to the i omega t uh, t omega but what is this? you remember here this is precisely the Fourier transform of the signal right? so you get that this is just f hat of omega and you get that this is equal 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi f hat of omega l hat of omega e to the i omega t t omega but this is nothing but the Fourier transform of the output because this is precisely has a form of a Fourier uh, inverse Fourier transform and we conclude that the image of f when you apply linear operator L has Fourier transform that is just the product of Fourier transform of f 
and Fourier transform of the impulse response. So linear operators act on band-limited signals simply by multiplying Fourier transform of the signal with the Fourier transform of the impulse response. Right? And sometimes we do filtering in frequency domain, namely we compute L hat of omega, we compute F hat of omega, and then multiply them and take inverse Fourier transform. You remember this is totally dual to what happened uh, in, uh, uh, with the discrete Fourier transform. Okay, so now, um, we are just one step away from finishing the... So, you just keep in mind that a Fourier transform of the output of your filter is obtained simply by multiplying the Fourier transform of the input with the uh, Fourier transform of the impulse response, which is called usually frequency response of the filter. Okay, so finally uh, to get the last uh, formula, let us see what this corresponds in the time domain. So let's see what L of F of T looks like in time domain. Well, so we have that this is 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi f hat of omega l hat of omega e to the i omega t d omega. Now what we are going to do, we are going to represent this as the Fourier integral, right? So <coughs> this will be equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi this will be integral from minus infinity to infinity f of, say, to, to avoid confusion of variables, let's use a new variable, f of u e to the um, e to the i omega uh, e to the minus i omega u d u uh, times L hat of omega e to the i omega t d omega. Right now, what we can do, uh, we can pull, we can exchange. Oops, uh, yeah, we can exchange these two integrals, right? And we get one over two pi integral from minus infinity to infinity with respect of u. So we can pull out everything that doesn't depend on um, on t, uh, and we will get um, uh, we will get. Let me see. So the um, um So this will be. F, so f of u and then integral from minus pi to pi, what do we have? Uh, we have L hat of omega, then I can combine these two and get e to the i omega t minus u uh, d omega and then the whole thing is uh, uh, dt, right, uh, integrated with uh, du. But what is 
this? This is precisely L of t. If I take this 1 over 2 pi and put it here, this will be just L, uh, L at point t minus u. Right? So this is now integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of u, l t minus u uh, du. And this expression, just like in the discrete Fourier transform case, is called convolution of the signal and, its imp and the impulse response of the filter. So these are the two kind of uh, main uh, uh, equalities in signal processing that a filter acts on a signal, on a signal in frequency domain simply by multiplying the, the Fourier transform of the signal with the Fourier transform of the impulse response. In the time domain, you have the equivalent of the product of two signals is convolution. So a signal, uh, sorry, a filter acts on a signal by convolving the signal with the impulse response of the filter. So this is our L of uh, F at T. And this gives you um, the, the, the kind of, and the last thing that we want to do is, uh, let me see if I told you everything we wanted to tell you. Um, blah, 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 blah. So what do we have? Just another equality and then we are done. So we have the following. So L applied to F at, say, we want to compute the values on sampling points, on integers, right? Well, this is equal to 1 over 2 pi, integral from minus pi to pi of uh, f hat of omega l hat of omega e to the i omega t uh, d omega, right? Now what we are going to do, we are going to represent both of these guys by their Fourier series. So this is now equal 1 over 2 pi. Sorry? Oh, that's a good, uh, uh, so this is uh, F I omega K, right? T is equal, we just instantiated uh, when uh, with the T equals to K, so here it's just for T equals to K. We are looking just at the values at integers. So now this is sum F hat of omega, that will be sum of uh, uh, of uh, n equals from minus infinity to infinity f of n e to the minus i omega m times uh, sum k equals from minus infinity to infinity uh, l of n e to the, uh, sorry, l of k uh, L of k, let me write it neatly so that the camera can see it. So this is uh, uh, L of k e to the minus i omega k. Uh, I already use k, yeah? so let me call it m. times e to the i omega k 
and then the whole thing is uh, the omega, right? Now, we do the very same trick. We pull the sigmas outside of integration, and we get that this is equal to sum of f of m uh, times L of m. And here, n and m go from minus infinity to infinity. And what do we have? We have e to the power k minus n minus m, right? I multiply that times uh, omega, d omega. But now, and I am missing here integral sign from minus pi to pi and 1 over 2 pi in front. But this guy is non-zero only for k equals n plus m. So this is not equal to zero only when k is equal to n plus m. So let's see what we get. We are almost there. Just a, a step or two more. So what do we have? So here we have sum. Now we can sum with respect to n, but for m we can write k minus n, right? K minus n. So f of n, l of k minus n, because this is equal to m because of this, so not equal to zero only for k equals n plus m, right? Because this has to become one. Otherwise, you have a periodic function integrated. Uh, so multiple of the variable uh, from minus pi to pi. So this is zero whenever uh, the, the exponent is non-zero, right? And n goes from minus infinity to infinity. And this is called f, the sequence fn convolved with the sequence uh, f or L of k. Or how shall we call it? Yeah, I guess uh, uh, over k and here over n. And you remember something like that holds also for the discrete Fourier transform. So to finish, we can now uh, uh, just complete the picture. Right? We want to have everything. So you remember there were three worlds. Uh, here you have f hat of omega. Right? In which an f hat of omega is representable as Fourier series uh, f of n e to the minus i n omega. Um, and then we have time domain f of t, and f of t is also representable by Fourier series for minus infinity, except the basis is not complex exponentials, but things. And finally, you have the universe in which you have just sequences, right? These are the three spaces that signal processing operates on. And we can now just say that here, L maps F hat of omega into f hat of omega times uh, l 
cat of omega in time domain uh, L maps f of t uh, into um, integral of uh, f of u L t minus u uh, d u and finally here L maps the sequence f of n into the sequence that looks like this. It's a sum when n, when say k, it doesn't matter, goes from minus infinity to infinity and then you have uh, f of k L of n minus k. Right? So in the frequency domain operator acts act simply by, multi, by simple multiplication of the Fourier transform of the signal and the, uh, the frequency response of the filter. In time domain, the continuous time domain, it's continuous convolution. In discrete time domain, it's a discrete convolution. And that all together, put together, is about probably 85% of signal processing. The rest is nitty gritty stuff. How do you do deal with the fact that, that uh, you cannot wait from minus infinity to infinity to act on your signal, so you have to localize the action of the operator, right? So somehow you have to truncate both this uh, uh, right and this to some finite values, but if you abruptly truncate, uh, something called Gibbs phenomenon happens, which is ugly. So what you do, you kind of tamper off, you multiply your signal with a window. So if this was your original signal, you multiply it with a window so that uh, it gently goes towards zero on, at the end, and then Gibbs phenomenon uh, disappears, uh, and this is called design of filters by windowing, right? And you have all sorts of different windows with different rates of between the width of the main lo lobe and uh, uh, you know how much energy is there and uh, how much energy is in the side lobes and things like that. And then of course you have to consider that not only you have to discretize, but you also have to quantize because you have finite precision arithmetic. So uh, you can work, you know, signals are usually given at best with 16 bits resolution. Um, and so, and your arithmetic, probably your registers are of 32 bits. So you have to study how the truncation uh, affects uh, you know, how the quantization affects the signal, and you can do all sorts of shaping of the uh, um, quantization noise. But these are all kind of nitty gritty. And then, of course, you have to make your algorithms fast, so you are actually operate in the discrete transform using discrete Fourier transform, uh, and uh, things of this nature. But the bottom line, you saw, in just two lectures, 80% of genuine kind of conceptual content of kind of classical signal processing. Of course, nowadays you have also wavelets, you have something called compressive sensing, but they are kind of extension. Wavelets are simply changing the basis. Instead of things, you get yet another kind of two-dimensionally indexed uh, family. Uh, in which uh, you don't shift left and right uh, for integer number of samples, but you can also squeeze and expand the, the base signals to capture different, uh, so to speak, level of detail, uh, actually different frequency bands, right? So with this in mind, uh, you can now read any signal processing book and uh, make a good sense of it. Uh, so there you go, you also got a uh, multimedia um, chunk, right? So what we saw 
are algorithms for internet. Um, and uh, various types of data aggregation and uh, um, uh, I guess I tried really my best to present everything that is kind of running out there uh, at this time with as large variety. You see, so the content is very different than 3121. It's not design methods, it's really the nitty gritty algorithms that uh, run out there so that you are familiar with them as well. Okie dokie, so I'll prepare a kind of mock uh, final questions for you uh, so that you kind of understand how to... So the most important thing is read the notes and the book and make sure you understand everything because the exam will test your understanding, no memorization will be uh, required because after all it's open book, right? So just make sure that, we, and this is really the content of the class, so make sure you understand uh, all of these algorithms. Okay, so it was fun teaching you and good luck with whatever you are going to do uh, with your life from now on. Yes.